Hey everybody. Now there's something I think that needs to be explained because I'm hearing a lot about it and it's, um, it's a topic which is mired in misinformation and misunderstanding. And the topic is the flattening of the yield curve. What are the reasons behind it? Okay. And, and that kind of flows into just a broader discussion about uh, interest rates and what causes interest rates to be at whatever level they are, okay? Now, let's start off from the beginning. Uh, interest rates are set by the Federal Reserve, which is the bank of the U.S. government, okay? It is a monopolist, and it has the power to set interest rates, not just in the Fed funds, but anywhere along the term structure anywhere it wants. And I'll get into that in a second. Now the flattening of the yield curve has been attributed to all kinds of things. I'm hearing all kinds of things. Uh, investors seeking yield, uh, European investors who want to escape uh, the negative interest rates over there and their the money's flowing here. Uh, the, the tax ramifications of this uh, tax reform bill that is now circulating in Congress, you know, all kinds of things, all right? And none of those things are applicable. None of those things are applicable, okay? First, let us understand what an interest rate is, okay? It is the rate, as I said before, it is the rate set by the central bank, uh, and the central bank has the ability to set a rate anywhere along the term structure that it wants by virtue of the fact that it can, it can buy um, public debt, treasury securities in unlimited quantities. If you wanted to set the rate at zero all along the term structure or at 30 year, it could. Okay, it has an unlimited capacity to buy 30 year bonds, which would set the rate at zero. Or even easier, it would just say that the rate is zero. All right, and then the rate would gravitate right down to that level. Uh, and I'll get to that in a second, but let's get back to the first thing that I said. Um, what is an interest rate? An interest rate is simply uh, a reflection of Fed policy over the term. What does that mean? A two-year rate is a reflection of Fed policy over a period of two years. What's the Fed going to do over that period? A five-year rate is a reflection of Fed policy over a five-year period. A 10-year rate over a 10-year period, a 30-year rate over a 30-year period, etc. Okay. Now we know the Fed sets rates uh, in the short end on the F Fed funds rate. That it's that's its policy rate, but it also states its policy going out. So in other words, right now the Fed is saying, uh, and I've said this before, uh, uh, that policymakers tell us what they are going to do. So basically, we just got to sit around and wait for them to tell us what they're going to do. So the Fed said they got three more rate hikes going out to 2020, and then they are done. And they're moving in quarter point increments. There was one coming up in December, then two more. So basically, that's another 0 0.75, uh, three, you know, 75 basis points. So that is that would effectively put the Fed funds rate at 2% by 2020, based on what the Fed is telling us. All right, that's what the market looks at. Let's face it, we all sit around at the, you know, look glued to our screens on the days of the Fed meetings or any central bank meetings, uh, waiting for them to tell us what the rate is going to be. Okay, if they weren't rate setters, we wouldn't care. But we all sit around staring at our screens or our phones, waiting for that announcement of what they're going to tell us the rate is going to be. So if the rate, if the Fed is saying the rate's going to be 2%, you know, three years from now, all the rates along the term structure start to gravitate towards 2% because they figured, well, it's going to go to 2% and then they're just going to sit there because that's what they told us. So it starts to come down. And it doesn't matter whether the Europeans are buying or whether institutions are buying. As a matter of fact, nobody has to buy. Nobody has to buy for the simple fact that at the end of the day, if the Fed wanted to, it could buy all the treasuries out there and easily set the rate to zero. Easily. Okay? So that is why uh, long-term rates are 
gravitating uh, down, or I should say trending lower. That is why the yield curve is flattening. Everything's converging towards a, a 2% rate, okay? Now, here's the other part of the story. You know, the Fed is like anybody else. It bases its policy on expectations about economic growth, about uh, unemployment, about inflation. By the way, inflation has no bearing, no bearing on interest rates, okay? The inflation rate could be a million percent. If the Fed wanted 30-year bonds at zero, guess what? They're going to be at zero, all right? Um, so here's where... Um, we have opportunity because the Fed is like everybody else. I mean, it has to make a forecast based on information that it has, and it's not infallible. As a matter of fact, we, we see many times now, historically, and going back, Fed has been very, uh, uh, you know, off, uh, way off course on, it, on its forecasts. All right? And central bank orthodoxy is such that central bankers believe that when inflation goes up or when the economy gets strong, that they have to raise interest rates. That's, you know, that's like a, a doctor saying uh, when somebody has an illness, the the orthodoxy, the, the 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 way the medical profession treats it is to use such and such a treatment. It might even be the wrong treatment. I mean, 150 years ago, you had barbers who were considered doctors, and when somebody was sick, what did they do? They drained out their blood on the belief that. The sickness must be in the blood, so if they drain out the blood, they're going to cure the patient. But of course, that killed the patient. We found out, they found out that was the wrong approach. All right Now, central bankers are uh, uniquely stubborn in this regard because there's a, a mainstream economic orthodoxy, and it's taught in all of the big name uh, business schools and universities. And it's all wrong. We know that. They, they don't subscribe to MMT. They don't understand the monetary system. They, they still think we're on the gold standard or fixed exchange rate. And it's all wrong. But that will be their prescription. So the opportunity arises in kind of um, outplaying the Fed. All right. Understanding that the Fed is a zombie when it comes to their understanding of the monetary system, just like all the other zombies who we fade all the time. So, um, inflation will rise, one, as a result of fiscal expansion, and two, as a result of Fed policy itself, which is price setting higher, all right? And three, as a result of, you just got some dynamics in the oil market going on right now, all right? So, inflation is going to rise, plus you got probably uh, uh, wage uh, pressures building, that sort of thing. They will respond according to the economic orthodoxy or the central banker orthodoxy. They will raise rates, thus raising the price level, all right? Thus reinforcing more fiscal expansion, more inflation, etc. So that's the dynamic of what is going to happen. And also, I've just explained the dynamic of what is happening. And it has nothing to do with tax policy. It has nothing to do with Europeans buying bonds looking for a better return. It has nothing to do with Chinese buying bonds. It has nothing to do with anything. It has nothing to do with inflation expectations. All right. It has to do with the fact that the Fed said three more rate hikes and we're done at, by 2020. And it's going to be 2%. That's what they're saying now. So all rates are... And by the way, if they stuck with that going out, you would see all rates converge to 2%. All right, because nobody is going to borrow. Let's say somebody wants to borrow in the in the in the banking system. Uh, they need Fed funds, right? They need reserves. They're not going to borrow reserves above what they can borrow from the Fed, right? They're not going to pay some bank three uh, percent uh, uh, when they could get it for one and a quarter, right? They're just not. And no bank is going to be able to lend out at 3% when somebody will be able to undercut them for one and a half and ultimately down to one and a quarter. So basically what I'm saying is the Fed doesn't even have to buy any bonds. They just state, once they state the rate, if they said today the 30 year is going to be at zero, guess what? It goes to zero. They wouldn't even have to buy a single bond just because they stand behind their policy rate. Very simple. They would just have to say it. 
and the market would do the rest. So that's the explanation, everybody. Have a wonderful, nice, joyous, healthy Thanksgiving. I'll see you back here maybe on Friday. Bye, everybody. Oh, and don't forget, sign up for a 30-day free trial of MMT Trader. Go to pitbulleconomics.com. You'll see it right on the homepage. You'll learn a whole bunch of stuff and you'll make money. See you, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving.